Hello, this is Andrew Mount for GG with a preview of the King George card at Ascot on Saturday. Now this video is kindly supported by our friends at 888 Sport and they've got some great price boosts for GG customers. You can access those on their website or in the link below this video. Now we kick off with a six furlong maiden. The stalls are in the middle of the track today, but it's possible that some of them will try to come stand side because that was a big advantage in the five furlong handicap that closed the last Ascot meeting with the four highest drawn horses in the field of 19 finishing one, two, three and four. So look out for those um, drawn high who might peel off towards the near side rail. Now, uh, it could pay to side with Richard Hannon in this race. Um, he's won this four times in the last five years and he wasn't represented in 2017, the only year he's blanked recently. His father, Richard Hannon Senior, also did well in this contest. Now he's got a 220,000 guineas newcomer in the shape of Mohawk King. He'd have to enter calculations, along with stablemate Shanghai Rock, who ran a promising race on his debut at Newbury last week, finishing 6 of 15. He'll surely improve for that. Others to um, warrant consideration include Tacitus for Brian Meehan. Now he's also a newcomer, and uh, Meehan's newcomers at Ascot have often done well. Um, two winners from 17 runners in the last 10 years. Those winners at 16 to 1 and 10 to 1 to ensure a profit at SP. And he also had others outrun um, big odds. Uh, three placed at 14 to 1, 25 to 1 and 40 to 1. So maybe look out for Tacitus at an each way price. Uh, moving on to the 115. This is a Phillies novice over seven furlongs. Isle of May, the only one with experience, is the obvious one here for John Gosden. She did really well to run second at uh, Newmarket on her debut, coming from off the pace and just unable to reel in the all-the-way winner. Uh, of the newcomers, creative flair for Charlie Appleby looks the obvious one. Moving on to the third race, the 150. We've got a seven furlong listed contest here. Um, Chirizzo has faced a couple of tough tasks in Group 2 companies since impressing on his debut at Wolverhampton and uh, he'll appreciate the drop down to listed level here. And the marvellously named Chindit is one to consider. He was a winner first time out at Doncaster when always prominent and getting no cover from the fierce headwind. And although he was the two to one favourite that day, I thought that win could be upgraded. Um, the Coventry Stakes form has taken some knocks, so John Gosden's Saquar could be vulnerable. And Naval Crown is more interesting. He was only third on his debut, but clocked a really fast time uh, in, at the July meeting at Newmarket when doing so. So uh, Chirizzo, Chindit and Naval Crown on the shortlist for the listed race. Uh, race four is the seven furlong international stakes, the very competitive big field handicap. And uh, the key form here could be the Buckingham Palace handicap over the same course and distance at Royal Ascot. Um, now in, in that race, uh, Ebury uh, was sixth. He was one of only four who raced on the far side. Uh, the rest of them racing um, down the stand side or in the centre. And uh, he won the race in that quartet. And uh, Luke's the obvious one here. He's been well backed anti post. And uh, his second favourite behind the Blue Mist at the moment. Uh, Blue Mist, of course, has, has been well found again. Looked unlucky at Royal Ascot, but that, that's Blue Mist for you. He's only won once from 12 starts since winning on his race course debut. He often comes there travelling, but doesn't always find. And there's no guarantee that he would have found for pressure had he enjoyed a clear run last time out. So don't be suckered into taking a short price about him. There's a couple of others who ran well in the Buckingham Palace who also uh, come here. Cliffs of Capri, he was fourth that day when I tipped him up uh, in my video blog and on my blog on uh, gg.co.uk. And Shalir, who was fifth. Now Shalir was... Um, um, uh, racing down the centre that day when ideally you wanted to be drawn high down the stand side. He's since been beaten at Haydock, but that was a mile on soft ground, so coming back to seven on a quicker surface will suit. Um, the three o'clock is uh, a straight handicap over the one mile trip. Tricky one this, but I quite like Great Ambassador. He was seventh of 22 in the Britannia Stakes on his reappearance. And the soft ground um, didn't help his stamina that day and he failed to get home. It was probably lack of peak, uh, peak fitness as well. Now he's over the same trip today but on a quicker surface. It's, um, it's going to be on the fast side of good unless the rain forecast for later in the afternoon arrives early. But it should still be fine for him. So great ambassador for Rafe Beckett, my pick in the 3 o'clock. Um, next we've got the, uh, the main event, the King George's, the 335. 
Uh, only four runners, but a fascinating contest with Enable heading the market and uh, likely to go off very short. However, she's a six-year-old now, and although only beaten three times in a 16-race career, two of those defeats have come in her last two starts, and uh, who's to say she won't be vulnerable again? Now, um, the, fr the front runner Gaeth did for her in the Eclipse that Sandown last time out. Um, we could have a similar situation here with uh, Aidan O'Brien Sovereign, the outsider of the field, perhaps being able to enjoy an easy lead. Now, because um, he caused a surprise in the Irish Derby in um, June of last year, winning at 33 to 1, having been backed from 66s in the morning. And since then, he's only had one run. That was in his reappearance again at the Curra last month, for over a mile six. Now, he didn't adopt his usual prominent tactics. He was um, given a patient ride. The track wasn't favouring such tactics that day, and it was a, a very easy reintroduction, and I think he'll be ridden more aggressively today. So although he's got a couple of shorter price stable mates in the shape of um, Japan and Anthony Van Dyke, who's to say that Sovereign won't get loose on the lead and be able to do what he did in last year's Irish Derby, and he'll do for me. Uh, the 410 is uh, a tricky handicap over a mile and a half, but I quite like Mascat here for Rafe Beckett. He was only fourth of six at uh, Newmarket last time, but that was a steadily run affair that favoured those who were up with the pace. The first, second and third were on the front end throughout, whereas Masca was best of those who came from the back. So uh, hopefully there'll be a, a strong pace which will suit him because he has taken a keen hold on occasions, although didn't last time. Uh, Masca can come through late and pick up the pieces. Um, moving on the 445, it's nursery season. These races are tricky at the best of the time, the best of times, two-year-old handicaps, and um, yeah, um, this one looks particularly open, even though there's not a huge number of runners. Now, Grantley is the one I like here for James Bethel. He clocked a really good time when winning from off the pace at Redcar on his uh, race course debut. That's hard to do on the straight track there. That was over six furlongs. Stepped up to seven next time at uh, Musselburgh. A steadily run contest didn't suit his running style and the 33 to 1 shot winner uh, was allowed to make all. He did well to finish second in the circumstances and uh, I think this track is going to be more amenable to his running style. I think he'll be suited by returning to a straight course as well. So um, Grantley for this tricky nursery. Finally, uh, we're moving on to the two mile handicap and uh, one I really like here is Sleeping Lion for James Fanshawe. Now Fanshawe's runners are generally ridden patiently and uh, that would have been ideal if Sleeping Lion had adopted those tactics at Newcastle last time, but he was ridden more forward than usual. Now the Newcastle uh, to Peter was um, really against anyone who was uh, on the front end at that meeting last time, uh, regardless of the trip, if you, were, uh, if, you, if you weren't ridden patiently you didn't have a prayer. Now surprisingly Sleeping Lion was closer to the pace than normal, uh, sitting in third place behind the two front runners, um, Charlie Dean, anyone who can have it all. Where, when they folded, he found himself in front a little bit too soon, I think, about half a mile from home, which is way too early at Newcastle. And he's done well to only finish uh, a length and a quarter behind the winner, Cosmelli, in second. Cosmelli reopposes today, but he was ridden patiently at Newcastle. And I'm confident that reverting to patient tactics can see Sleeping Lion revert to winning ways. And I'd say he's the nap on the card for me. Uh, that's it until next time until then best of luck and don't forget to look at the 888 sport website and see those price boosts for gg customers that's it from me cheers